All right, so hello there. In class, you saw we talked about continuity a little bit. That's gonna come up back at the end of the lesson. Um, we worked on these limits here. We did our algebra. We just uh, basically, you know, plugged the numbers into the problem and that worked, just evaluating. Um, we separated here and here and used our old like knowledge from last year. Over here, we factored. And so all those things are possible, but sometimes you can't do any of those things. So we go on to the next thing. All right, so when the limit is not so easy, quote unquote, there are some different things you have to check out to evaluate the limit. Recall from last year when you calculate the limit of a function, the answer had to agree from the left and the right sides like we talked about in class as well, um, of an x value. So now we're in 3D, so the limit has to match from every direction along any path you choose, along any line, along any curve, anything, right? So you can see in this next example that um, we are going to try to do this limit as you go to 0, 0, 0. I can't plug in 0, 0 because I end up getting um, 0 plus 2 times 0 over 0 minus 2 times 0. I can't separate this because um, the you know everything's added and subtracted. Um, there's just nothing to do, and so um, either way we work this, you end up getting zero over zero. All right. So what you do is this: you try a few different things, and I'll show you on the next page. We'll try them here, but I'll show you on the next page um, uh, the list of things that you would have to try. And when all these things work, then you know that you are done. And if they all match, then you're good. So let's try our first thing. The easiest thing to do is to try along the line when x equals 0. So when x equals 0, you basically um, go through and you let all the x's be 0. And so if all the x's were 0, that means that this piece and this piece would be gone, or that those two x's would be gone. So you'd basically be doing um, the limit as y goes to 0 because x is already 0, so you're really just talking about the y's right here. So, and you would end up having 2y over negative 2y. So these would cancel out, so you'd have the limit as y goes to 0 because x is 0 itself. And um, you'd get basically um, negative 1 right here, so that limit is negative 1. Then, um, let's, so the limit's negative 1. Then if we do it along a different line, say y equals 0, well, look what happens. I would be doing the limit then as x is going to 0, because I'm going along the line when y equals 0, so I don't have to basically do like a double piece anymore. So I'm letting y be 0, so these two y's go away. So I basically get um, x over x. Well, that is the limit as x goes to 0. That is a 1, and that equals 1, because the limit of a constant is that constant. So this is a mismatch, all right? So there is a mismatch. Therefore, the limit does not exist. All right, so we went along the line when x equals 0 and y equals 0, they didn't match, and um, that's that. All right, let's go down to this next one. So um, you can do those two things, and then um, there's a couple others you can try, so we're going to do that again over here. So x equals 0 in this function. Again, I can, if I separate it, I have this addition down here, which kind of stops me from being, doing anything useful and separating them. Um, like I did on the other page. So let's do x equals 0. So if I have x equals 0, then the top would turn into 0, the bottom would turn into y to the fourth. So basically I'd be doing the limit as y goes to 0 of 0. So this whole thing is 0 right here, so my answer would be 0. If I do along y equals 0, well y equals 0 means I'm doing the limit still of x going to 0. And if y was 0, the top would be 0, and the bottom would be x squared. Well, 0 over x squared is just 0. So those seem to match pretty well, and you're like, okay, it's looking good. Well, there's a couple other things you could do. You could do along the line y equals x. So that means that you're going to turn all the y's into 
x's, all right? So basically, your y's are going to disappear because you're going to, going to do this along, uh, you're going to turn all the y's into x's. So that means I'm going to have x times x squared, so I'll have x to the third on top. On the bottom, I'll have x squared plus y to the fourth. Okay, and so I'm doing the limit now as x is going to zero. I no longer have a y. All right, so I can cancel an x squared from everything. So I end up getting x over um, 1 plus x squared. I'm doing the limit as x is going to zero. Sorry, I forgot to write that there. Um, and so now I can actually plug in zero. If I plug in zero, the top turns into zero and the bottom is 1 plus zero. So I have zero over 1, which is zero. So everything's looking strong. You're like, oh, I got zero three times. All right. So a couple other things. We could do y equals negative x, but um, you can see all the y's have, um, have uh, squares and fourth power. So it's just going to turn out the same as y equals positive x. All right. So let's try y equals x squared. All right. So all the y's are now x squared. So that means that I'm going to have the limit as x is going to 0. So this y right here is going to turn into an x squared. So I'm going to have x squared squared. So I have x to the fourth times another x on top. So I'm basically getting x to the fifth. On the bottom, I'll have x squared plus I'll have an x squared inside that fourth power. So x squared to the fourth, that'd be x to the eighth. All right, so again, much like before, I can reduce this down by x squared. So that's going to turn into a 1. That's going to turn into a 6. That's going to turn into a 3. So similar to before, I'll have x to the third over 1 plus x to the sixth. So I'll just get 0 over 1, which is 0. And our last effort here is going to be x equals y squared. Now, let's see. So all the x's turn into y squareds. So that means that this guy is going to turn into a y squared. So y squared times y squared on the top is y to the fourth. On the bottom, um, this x right here is now a y squared. So I have a y squared squared, so y to the fourth. So on the bottom, I'm going to have a y to the fourth plus another y to the fourth. So I have two y to the fourths. I have the limit as y goes to zero. Well, looky here. These cancel, so I have the limit as y goes to 0 of 1 half, and that would be 1 half. Boo! So, therefore, does not exist. And so every once in a while I think it's going great, but you got to keep trying. And mostly, like I said, you're kind of looking for a mismatch. <laughs> so, um, and then it's like you're looking to fail. All right, so what should you test to determine if a limit exists? So if you can test these... Um, these six things here then and not find a failure, then we're going to just say that you're, you've done your due diligence and, and you're fine. So we're going to also do x equals zero. We're going to do y equals zero. We're going to do y equals x and y equals negative x. Um, you could also do this, y equals mx. So basically that's going to be a line with, with a slope of m and so that way you could see if m were anything, basically, uh, you know, it would just be like an ambiguous case in a way. All right, and then we got y equals x squared and x equals y squared. So if those things work, um, then you don't find a, a mismatch, then you're okay. All right, so here. So I can kind of tell, looking at this problem, um, that if I let wait a minute this this is like hang on a second oh no it's not the same sorry I thought it was the same I can kind of look here and say to myself you know I can't separate it I can factor the top you know the top factors into x plus y and x minus y but that doesn't really do me any good because the bottom doesn't factor so you know it's kind of not really that much worth mentioning right but I can kind of look at this and tell, say to myself, if I let the x's be 0, like if I let these disappear, I'm going to get negative y squared over positive y squared. I'll get negative 1. If I let the y's be 0, uh, with the x's, I'm going to have x squared over x squared, and I'm going to get a positive 1. So we're going to get a mismatch. But we'll go ahead and write it. All right. So luckily, it just works out right away. All right, so if x were 0, that means I'd only have y left over to worry about. 
So if x's were 0, that means I'd have negative y squared over y squared. These cancel out to 1, so I'd get negative 1. If I'd have the limit, oh, what just happened? Limit as x goes to 0, because all the y's are 0. Um, so let's see, that would be x squared over x squared. That cancels out to 1, so that limit would be 1. So boo does not exist. All right, so if I look here, um, I can kind of tell that if I let x be 0, the top is going to be 0. If I let y be 0, the top will also be 0. And so um, I'm going to get 0 either way. So I'm going to go ahead and skip doing x equals 0 and y equals 0. Those are just going to produce 0. So that's a little bit, you know, we could jot that down. If x equals 0, my limit is 0. If y equals 0, my limit is 0. All right, so just real quick again, if x were 0, I would get a big fat 0 on the top. And on the bottom, I would have 4y squared. So 0 over 4y squared would be 0. And if, x, if y were 0, I'd have a big fat 0 on the top over um, x to the fourth. Well, 0 over x to the fourth is 0. So that would also be 0. All right, so let's try the next two, or the next one. So let's let, um, I don't know, we could do y equals x. Let's see what happens there. So y equals x. Um, that would mean that I'd have the limit as y goes to 0. All the y, oh, y is x. I could do it either way, but I guess I kind of want to do x's. So let me do that. All right, just easier to think with x's. All right, so all the x's are y, or all the y's are x's. So I'm going to get x squared times x and then e to the x. On the bottom, I will have x to the fourth plus 4x squared. All right, let's clean this up. Everybody can reduce down by x squared, so let's do that. So the top, I'll have x e to the x over on the bottom, x squared plus 4. Okay, so I have my limit as x goes to 0. And so when I do this, I plug in, I can go ahead and plug in 0 because I'm going to have 0 times e to the 0 on top. So 0 times 1 is 0. On the bottom, I have x squared, which is 0, plus 4, so 0 over 4, 0. So that one was okay. All right, so let's try um, y equals x squared. So all the y's are x squared, so that means I will have an x squared here. So x squared, x squared makes x to the fourth. This y is an x squared, so e to the x squared. On the bottom, all the y's are x squared, so I'll have x to the fourth plus 4, and then I'll have x squared squared, so I'll have x to the fourth. Well, everything in here Um, reduces by x to the fourth. So I cancel that out. This turns into a one. Um, this goes away. So I have the limit as x goes to zero of basically e to the x squared over one plus four, so five. When I plug in, uh-oh, when I plug in zero, I get e to the zero over five. Well, that is one over five. Boo, does not exist. Okay, so a lot of times they don't exist. <laughs> All right, so back to here. We've already done these limits, and so um, what's going to happen to us here, we're just going back to our little definition of continuity. All right, and so um, if you want to check if something's continuous, you got to check this, check this out. So basically, this function over here is defined everywhere except for 0, 0. Because when x is 0 and y is 0, then you get 0 over 0, which is indeterminate. But then somebody comes along and says, oh, well, if you're at 0, 0, the answer is 0. Okay, so it's defined everywhere. Yes. Okay, does the limit exist? All right, well, if you recall, this is one of the limits we did um, earlier, 3xy squared. That was, well, 3xy squared. It's kind of similar to one at the bottom here. Let me see. x squared plus y to the fourth. Yeah, okay. So that 3 being up there doesn't do a thing. 
um, this limit, this is this one down here that we did right here, this one did not exist. Okay, that three being there doesn't really change anything. Um, all my zeros would still be zero, and then the one half at the bottom would be three halves, so I'd still get a mismatch. Okay, all right, so um, this worked. Oopsie, this worked, this did not, so not continuous. Okay, and same thing for the next one. They got x squared minus y squared. So defined everywhere, yes, it's defined everywhere except 0, 0, and then this one defines it at 0, 0. And so x squared minus y squared, that was this guy on the top left. The limit did not exist. So yes, no, and that's it. All right, this last part. Determine the set of points for which this function is continuous. So think about the inverse sine, okay? So um, the arc sine function can handle any number between negative one and one, right? Like when you're doing the arc sine, like remember back in the olden days when you were on your calculator and you wanted to say, okay, well, um, the sine was 0.7 or whatever. What angle gave me that, that sine value? All right, and so when you did this in your calculator, sine negative one of something, the number inside here, if it was too big, like if you put in a 1.5, the calculator was like, no, 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 I can't do that. Because the sine of any angle goes to one or negative one. That's why we get a graph like this for the sine. The sine of any angle, it just follows all these values between negative one and one. Like around the unit circle, the sine of any angle, it never gets smaller than negative one. It never gets bigger than positive one. So you cannot do the sine of anything outside of that category. So like the arc sine, its domain is from negative one to one. You can't ask the arc sine of something bigger than one or less than negative one. So that means that this part right here, x minus y, has to stay between negative one and positive one. And so that would be the area where this thing exists and it's continuous there because there's no problems. Um, arc sine is continuous between those two numbers and um, you could actually evaluate this function there. It's defined, the limits are gonna exist here and the limits will match the, um, the function value. All right, so next time in class, we'll work on these problems here and I will see you later. Bye-bye.